Today is 7-7-2023. It's a lucky day. It's Friday, TGIF, and our topic for today is philosophy, which comes from two words, philo, Sophia. So philo means love of, and Sophia means wisdom. So we're going out into the weekend and we all have a philosophy of how to approach the weekend. Shall we save time? Shall we save money? Shall we spend money? Shall we spend time with family? Everybody has a philosophy of life. And we're going to be reading from a introduction to a book called The Teachings of the Great Philosophers by S.E. Frost, Jr. And so, welcome to our philosophy episode. Hello, are you there? Hey, um, I'm, I'm thinking how long, how long does lucky day uh, will last for me? And uh, also, is it legit? I mean, lucky day at all? Well, seven is a lucky number and seven, seven is a double lucky. So seven, seven. You should go buy some lottery tickets. You should go play, uh, go pl do something dangerous. You're, I, I believe you can win this weekend. Well, I mean, that's just how I would do it. I would say, I knew that today was seven, Friday. Seven, seven. I forgot about seven, seven. You're right. Well, you know, it's the weekend, and we're going to read a little bit from this um, uh, four or five paragraphs, but I had a song that I was going to play for, for us. It's by Bruce Springsteen, who came out of New Jersey, and the name of the song is Dancing in the Dark, and he talks about how he's tired of life. He just goes to work. He comes home. He goes to work. He comes home. You know, he just wants to feel alive, and he's bored and tired, and he says, come on, baby, help me. You can't start a fire without a spark. So we're just going to listen to that for a second. Well, I can. Okay, here we go. Where is it? I can do this. Oh, no. It, it's, oh, wow. It's playing some... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here with Bruce Springsteen, so I don't much care about you. What did we say? No, I'm joking. I'm. Uh, <laughs> it's a really great song, you know. It's a really great song because, like, everybody wants to do something. Everyone wants to feel alive. They want to feel like their life has meaning. That something is purposeful. Are, are you feeling alive today? I don't know. I have a neck pain. Uh, pain in the neck. Yeah. Uh, oh. Getting have old. You been, have you been craning your neck looking at something? Like for, for, I've been doing that for, for the past, I don't know, 20 years. Yes, it's, it's actually, it's just, it's a, you know how I diagnose everything? It's called. It's a tragedy. No, no, I've actually diagnosed this with some people. Uh, it's called um, forward head extension. You start to develop like almost like a strain in the back of your neck and a small lump. You could become a hunchback pretty soon if you keep it up. I know. Not to, let's, yeah. let's talk about something more wholesome. Like, what did you say about how you can start a fire with that spark? Was that a, like a line from the song? Yeah, we just played the song. It's called Dancing in the Dark. And he's he's comes from a working class neighborhood in New Jersey. And this was a song that uh, celebrates the, the working class. And he says, you know, he's just tired of going to work and feeling like nothing. He just wants to feel alive. And he he just is talking to this girl and says, you know, come on, help me. You know, you know, you can't start a fire. Like, let's build a fire of love or romance or whatever. And, you know, I need a spark. Like, why what, what don't you, like, get with my program here? This, this, this must be a philosophy stuff. 
Yes, it is. He's going to be coming to Columbus, Ohio on September the 21st. He'll be in London at Hyde Park on July the 8th. Oh, my gosh, tomorrow we could meet in London. Did you want to go? No. I okay, don't know. August, August, the 20, <laughs> August the 26th, he'll be in Foxborough. I don't even know what that is. And then on September 10th, he'll be in the Brook, in Brooklyn Bowl in New York. Or we could just listen to it on YouTube and not go anywhere. There's only one place I could uh, I would have gone to would have would have liked to go to the first is the moon there are two actually first is the moon and second is Mars I would have liked to visit those two planets as for New York or London or any other city no I'm I'm not very keen in not doing that. Well, I already, I've already been to London and I've already been to New York. And what I'm looking forward to is the, you know, Dallas is not being so hot. And, and well, anyhow, let's talk about philosophy. This, this uh, book that we have up here uh, has about one, two, three, four, five paragraphs. And it starts off uh, the, the author who has edited um, a discussion of all different types of philosophers throughout time, you know, Greeks and Romans and the Renaissance and modern philosophers and idealists and realists and existentialists. So here's his introduction. Everyone, whether he be a plowman or a banker, a clerk or a captain, citizen or ruler is in a real sense, a philosopher. Being human, having a highly developed brain and nervous system, he must think, and thinking is the pathway to philosophy. Well, those people, they're like Zen Buddhists. They say stuff that you can't argue with, but uh, then again, it's not helping. Well, you're not even trying. <laughs> I, I have. <laughs> Before. No, no, what I'm saying, and, I love this idea that, that philosophy is a natural habit of man, or the human being is a thinking being. Like, man is but a reed, the weakest thing in nature, but he is a thinking reed. That is, that's Pascal. You, by, by, by men, by men, you mean, you mean Humans. Like the men only yeah. or women too? Yeah, we, we mean, yeah, human beings. Let's not yeah. go crazy about, like, we're all humans. And I mean, I just like the idea that philosophy is not reserved for the men in the ivory tower, that mm -hmm. everyone is a bit mm -hmm. of a philosopher, whether you're a plumber or you're a banker or you're working in a grocery store. Everyone mm -hmm. has a raison d'etre or reason for being, and they have ways of putting the world together. So I like this opening paragraph because thinking is our natural ability. Yeah, well, as, again, I I like to philosophize now and then, but I always think, is it a, like, because if you have a philosophy degree, you would, that doesn't mean you're a real doctor, right, or medical doctor, but still you're kind of a professor. But uh, is, is philosophy even a science? Because philosophy always been about big questions, like what kind of world do we live no, in? It's and stuff it's liberal arts. If you want to do science, that's like hard, hard sciences like biology and anatomy and chemistry. So hard what we're doing, yeah, the natural, like at a university, there's different colleges. So if you mm -hmm. want to study art, you go to the College of Fine Arts. If you want to mm -hmm. study philosophy, you go to the liberal arts. You know, it's, it is, it is, uh, it's like critical thinking and rhetoric. But if you want yeah. to become a doctor, you're going to study biology and chemistry. So anyhow, that's the first paragraph. Let me read. Let me read the second. You want to read the second paragraph? Yeah, absolutely. Why do you even ask me? Of course, I want to read it. <laughs> do it then. <laughs> I mean, would you please? No, no. Read I want you second? to read it. I want you to read it. No, I want you to read it. But I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, I told you we're doing this. You're supposed to have it in front of you. You just like never follow directions. The world no, in which we... went dark. I don't know why. It, uh, I thought I lost you, but no. I mean, the voice is okay, but uh, no visibility. Because you've brought you've 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 leaned in the elevator against the settings button, and now your setting of brightness is too low. Oh, you you're getting much better in, in IT stuff than you were a year ago. 
ago. I'm not even going right? to respond to that. The world Why are you in which speechless? the world in which we live will not let us rest. It keeps yeah. prodding, prodding us, challenging us with problems to be solved, demanding that we act wisely or be destroyed by the forces which inhabit our world. In this way, experiences are born, hungers, satisfactions, pains, pleasures, sights, feelings, sounds, a host of others. Who, who said that, Socrates? I am reading from the introduction to the basic teachings of the great philosophers by S.E. Frost, Jr. He is introducing his book about what is philosophy. So he is a can, writer and he is a thinker. This can, is not a I, medical textbook. No, no, no. Can, can I say something uh, about philosophy? Too? Sure. Yeah, but because I'm, um, I remember that from my, I don't know, childhood, I, I wish to say, but maybe no, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Socrates said that uh, uh, he was a great philosopher. You know who Socrates was? Yep. Yeah, he said, if you get, if you marry, if you get a good wife, you'll become happy. Well, if you get a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. Well, I, I, I am a philosopher, I think. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I well, think Socrates was very smart, street smart. Well, the thing about him is it's very interesting that uh, uh, philosophy is divided into different sections. They're the pre-Socratics. And then there's the so Socratics. So the way that Socrates taught was by just wandering around talking. And if you like to hear him talk, you just go follow him. So these were like wandering uh, kind of lecturers. So they weren't in a building and they weren't in a school. What later became the school of Athens started off with Socrates just wandering around. So before Socrates are the pre-Socratics. And they were mainly, uh, they would look at the stars, they would look at rocks, they would look at their hand, and they were trying to understand what is this stuff around us. So those are kind of like kind of natural philosophers, but Socrates is one of the first to make thinking kind of a, a formal thing to think about. But the whole idea of philosophy is like if we look at the, the way the roots are broken down, philo, sophia. Philo means love of, and then sophia is wisdom. So we would love to be wise, or we would love to figure out our jobs. We would love to figure out how to have a good relationship. We would love to figure out how to have a better car or whatever. So just the ability to think is, is, our, is part of our natural way of being. But we cannot rest contented with a mass of unrelated experiences scattered at random throughout life. We must take our experiences and weave them into some kind of a pattern, a whole in which is more or less satisfying to us. This pattern, this whole that we weave, W-H-O-L-E, is our philosophy. So I have my life experiences that I kind of collect and sort through and weave together into what is my approach to life. And you have your life experiences, ups and downs, good and bad, right and wrong, that you kind of like weave together and come up with is your life philosophy. And I know that our philosophy when we're age 20 and when we're age 40 could be a little bit different because we're different at age 20 and age 40. or. 50 or 60 or 80. Are, are you thinking? Well, I hear no talking, so I'm going to say that you're probably just thinking, ruminating, and chewing on these ideas. So as I traveled around a lot, I 
came to see that most people want the same things. They want food, they want shelter, they want someone to listen to them, they want affection, they want comfort. And um, so whether you're in Istanbul or you're in Paris or Rome or a little small village in Turkey or you're in Scandinavia, I just sort of discovered on my own that most people want the same things. And, you know, most people are uh, have a spiritual nature. They may not be going into a church or going into a synagogue, but pretty much all human beings are in awe when a baby is born, like, wow, look at that. Or when somebody passes away, it's like, gosh, well, that was their life. Or when we get up and we see a sunrise, it's a universal experience to sort of think like, wow, here's another day. So you might be at a university teaching philosophy or you might be, you know, standing on a boat, a simple boat on the Nile River. And these human experiences we have are kind of universal. So are you still there or maybe this is just going to be my episode? No, no, I'm thinking, I'm listening to you. I'm thinking about Socrates and, uh, and the universal experience you mentioned, because if, if, if he had a smartphone, for instance, or Plato, Plato was, I think, his student. If they both had smartphones, would have made like that far? I didn't understand. Plato, if he had a smartphone, would he do what? Would, would he become a philosopher? We, we are all natural philosophers, and Plato examined the world, and he came up with the three different things that the good, the true, and the beautiful, are. That, that's the world of the I, ideals, that, that as he went through life, he said that the universals exist in the abstract, and we perceive them in the world. For example, you have the ideal of what a beautiful woman is. And as you see a woman crossing the street, or as you see a woman in the elevator, or you see a woman driving her car, you say, wow, she looks hot. But you have in your mind the abstract of what beauty is. So Plato came up with the idea of the theory of the ideals, the good, the true, and the beautiful. So, you know, let's suppose that I'm going out to buy furniture and I'm looking around at furniture and let's suppose I like mid-century modern, very clean lines, or maybe I like Baroque curved lines. Well, the idea of Baroque furniture exists as an ideal in my mind. And when I go out to look at furniture, I can never get the absolute, but I, I get the approximate. And so Plato would say, like with women, let's just pretend that you're a man, okay? You have this idea of what would make a perfect wife or a per perfect partner or a perfect date or a perfect romance. The idea of perfection exists in your mind and you go on a date, it's like, well, yeah, it was okay, but you know, she really talked a lot. Or you go on another date, it's like, yeah, she looks so good in her photos, but like her teeth were crooked when I met her. Or, wow, she looked fabulous, but you know, she's a vegetarian. I can't, I can't go out with, I can't spend time with a vegetarian. So dissatisfaction comes from not understanding that you can never have the ideal. You're just having approximations of ideal women, approximations of the ideal date. I mean, like Plato didn't talk about dating, but I'm just bringing it into the 21st century. But good, true, and the beautiful is, is Plato. Yeah, but there is one thing I didn't understand from what you have just said. Can I can I ask you a question? Because sure, I need yeah. to know. Uh, the, the, the vegetarian thing. I mean, what's what's wrong with the uh, like dating a vegetarian or or um, like uh, if there will, if if a woman a vegetarian, why wouldn't that stop me from dating her? No, I'm saying it, it might not be a problem. Like I'm saying it, 
No, no, no. I'm just saying, no, he didn't talk about vegetarianism. I'm just saying, for example, if you loved, if you loved, I don't know, I mean, you know, I, I, I just know that I'm a Texan and I like to go to barbecues. I like to go out, be outside. I like to dance. I like to, you know, uh, have cookouts and I like to be on roofs, you know, looking out over the city and eating food. So if somebody is like always counting calories and they're, you know, they, they are a vegetarian. Well, I mean, I just had this friend, you know, she, she was, she met some guy online uh, on an online dating site called Hinge, H-I-N-G-E. And I, and I just ran into her someplace. She was, oh, here's so-and-so. I forget what the guy's name was. Let's just say his name was Paul. You know, he was tall. He was nice looking. He, um, I thought his pants were too tight, but anyhow, and the waist, the belt was too high up there. And she goes, what do you think about him? I go, well, you know, I guess he's okay. And then she texted me a, a week or so later. She said, well, she's not going to subscribe, so I don't have to worry about this. But she, she said that, yeah, they had a couple um, rolls in the bed, which was fine, but he couldn't get together anymore because he was fasting. Like, what does that mean? He said, well, you know, once a month he takes a weekend off to fast. And, and, and also that he, has, he is actually a vegetarian and so and and he doesn't drink so this he's going to try to go with this girl who loves to eat loves to dance loves to drink so that was something that was just not going to happen because he's a vegetarian and and he doesn't eat meat and uh once a month he he fasts for for a, a fast to clean his body out or whatever i don't know if you yeah wanna... you, you mentioned you mentioned the belt, and uh, I immediately, like yesterday, I went to the gym, as you said, that might help with the tension and anxiety and all. And uh, I was deadlifting. You know what deadlifting is? Like when you're lifting the like real heavy logs off the ground, and then you drop them back because they're yeah. really heavy. So I was like deadlifting yesterday, and I there is uh, I have this uh, like powerlifting belt, uh, yeah. and I had this like a little bit too high and uh, too tight you said it too tight right uh, i use the belt when it's really heavy and uh it now it hurts now it hurts you know and uh, you just rework all this um feelings and thoughts that uh and pain that i had the other day so I, i'm sad well the other thing is that's probably why your neck hurts you pulled everything like yeah, because because neck is a very important part of the body too, and you have to keep like very proper posture and position when you when you're oh, deadlifting. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah maybe yeah. I should, maybe you should start deadlifting too, because uh, many women deadlift and that 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 uh, yeah, uh, not as much as men do. But no, nah, I'm okay. not going to do stuff like that. I'm just going to sit on a stationary bicycle, and then I do this other one. It's a thigh press where you just like some machine pushes out your thighs and you push them back in. It's like a thigh press. Then there's another, it's like a big uh, boxing bag and you pull down these weights and it, from your like armpit to your waist, the muscles that are from your armpit to your waist, it tones those up. So like, no, I don't do treadmill. No, no, my life is a treadmill, I'm not getting on a treadmill. And also not going to do weights. No, thank you. I mean, okay. I carry groceries. No, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just saying, no problem. Here. No, I mean, I carry I carry groceries up and down the stairs. I live on the second floor. I carry I carry canvases everywhere. I ca I mean, I'm I'm like doing lift and carry. I'm I'm good, but I have to be careful to to stand up straight. And if I'm moving my potted plants around on my patio i can't lean over and lift i have to squat and lift because if you lean over and lift you pull out your back yeah that that's actually that's a very important rule for for the deadlifting uh, competitions too or exercise because that can easily like break your back if uh, you're doing the wrong yeah and that's so, kind of philosophy it make you think about life and uh Re, uh, rearrange your priorities if you break your back. 
Yeah, I I've mean, been there. You know, yeah, I've been around life, the block. Life is life is uh, life is complicated. Well, let's look at the next paragraph. We've done one, two, three. Okay. So Do you, you think next part is, Okay, go. On. Your philosophy then is the meaning which the world has for you. It is your answer to the question why. Having fitted your experiences into this whole, having related them to each other, you say of the world, this is the way things fit together. This is the world I understand. This is my philosophy. So this author says that philosophy is a natural part of being a human and that it, it's an individual answer to the question, why? Like if I ask you, why do you go to the gym? Well, I guess I told you already that uh, if I don't go to the gym, I feel horrible. I don't know yeah, how to, you, you remember you, you told me that there is a, some kind of acquaintance of yours and he cannot skip a day in the gym because uh, I, I do too. If I, if I have a high fever or I have a head cold, anything, I still go to the gym. I don't know, it's some kind of a reflex or instinct. It makes me no, feel better. It makes me, makes me a better man. No, it, it is because that? you're, yeah, you're keeping your commitment to yourself to doing something physical, you know, to do something to get your heart rate up. And then, you know, anybody that has blo high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Yeah, it's like you, if, you're, if you're in love with a woman, if falling in love with a woman, uh, it, and that woman makes you a better man, that love makes you a better man. Same with the dream. So if you, if you deadlift you, it makes you a better man. You fall in love with the, with the barbell. Do you think Socrates had a deadlift? Socrates? Oh, Socrates. Well, I don't know. He had a lot of people that followed him and they brought him lunch and they brought him dinner. And he like laid around and talked to people. Like, I don't think so. I don't think so. And he lived in Greece. I mean, Greece is fabulous. Everybody's, I love Greece. I, there's no ugly people in Greece. There are no ugly people in Italy. These places are amazing. They have like olive skin and they have olive oil and they have wine and they have cheese. And like, you know, you don't, you know, places, there are some places where you live in the world where you got to like really work to, to have a life. Man, Greece is like paradise. And so I like Greece and I like Italy a lot, like the coast, like, and also the southern coast of France, like no ugly people there. Like, you know, everyone's beautiful. Everyone smells good. Everyone is in shape just because you're walking around a lot. You're climbing up little hills. Everyone's got a red skirt and high heel shoes on. Like you figure I better get a red skirt, you know, like. It, it's strange how you define beauty, because if you, if you look at the sky, you see these clouds going over the sky, and, uh, and they're not perfect, but they're all beautiful, same as people. I mean, uh, the definition is um, very subjective, and uh, nobody says, oh, that cloud is uh, like not, that cloud is ugly. I've never heard that before. Uh, or that cloud is beautiful. I mean, they're beautiful. I'm not sure about Greece and Italy and France, because there are... I've never been there. That's why I'm not sure. Can can you can you believe that? I've I've never been to Saint Petersburg. I told you there aren't many places I want to go, so I don't even have an anxiety if I have to stop at the red light because uh, I don't have many places. So. Well, to you go. know the thing. The thing is, um, I just know that Americans in general we are rather lazy, and also Texans are rather lazy because we have big land big cars, big trucks, big hamburgers, big steaks, big appetites, big guns, and beautiful women. So like uh, America, uh, Texans are kind of known as being overweight. And like the idea of an American tourist, you know, the ugly American, you know, he's not dressed very well. He's slightly overweight. I mean, when you go to airports, I always love to go to airports and look at people. I can tell who are the Germans and who are the Swiss, who are the Swedes, 
I can tell what country people are from by looking at their shoes and looking at how they're dressed. Um, you know, there's some people like French women and Italian women, it doesn't matter if they're 15 or if they're 55, like they know how to dress. And the thing for men, like it's just a it's just a style that they have. And and there's an expression in Italy, it's called sprezzatura, sprezzatura. It means effortless grace. Effortless, like well, I don't know. I don't know why we're talking about this. Well, I mean, to me, the philosophy, a philosophy of life would be to enjoy life, to spend time with people, and you know, to try to take care of your body, especially since it's the only one you got. Like, I mean, I personally don't believe in reincarnation, but even if I did, this is the one I got right now. So I need to do some movement. I need to do some walking. I need to be careful moving plants around the patio. I need to be careful getting into my car because it's like over 40 degrees Celsius or 104. So that would be my, my philosophy. Now, why do I go to the gym? Why do I go to the gym? Well, one, because uh, my daughter said, we're getting you a gym membership. You know, Dallas is too hot. It is too cold. You can't be out all the time outside. Just go to the gym and do your thing and we'll pay for it. So it's like, oh, okay, I think I'll do that. And it's a brand new facility with huge plate glass windows and all brand new equipment. And maybe I already mentioned this, before you go into the gym, there's a foyer that has books you can read and magazines and they have coffee and they have donuts and everyone's beautiful and they're all sitting around chatting about their amazing life. Like, I just love <laughs> going to the gym, never even getting on a piece of equipment, just like being there. Like, I love being at the gym. <laughs> it's great. I mean, everyone's beautiful and everyone smells good and everyone is going off to an amazing job, you know, and everyone's thighs look good and everyone's hair looks good. Like, who wouldn't want to go to the gym? Is, it, is that yeah, how it is at your gym? Is that how it is at your gym? I mean, it's not you. I, mean, it's kind of I, I wonder how many philosophers there are in the gym, like on the treadmill or deadlift. And, well, there are two of us, but I'm sure there are others. Oh, there are, because um, SMU, Southern Methodist University, is here. It has a big philosophy department. Also, um, uh, Houston Community College is a community college, but they also have a philosophy department. And we have... We have quite a few universities and some of the people live in Lakewood, like the richest area would be Turtle Creek, Highland Park, Preston Hollow. Lakewood is kind of right up there. And and the neighborhood that I happen to live in is called Lakewood. So there could, there could be some like philosophy women or men that are before they go to teach their classes. Oh, actually I met this, this guy, he was, um, he was retired and he was a government professor and he was married to a Romanian woman. She was from Romania. And uh, I ran into him at the Y. I go, you go to the Y? He goes, yeah, I have to. I have to, my body is a machine. I have to keep it moving. It's like, wow. Yeah, if, if you just leave a machine in the corner to rust, it gets, you know, cranky and rusty. Your body is a machine. Imagine that Plato and Socrates and all the old philosophies, they'd be in the gym philosophizing to each other. Yeah, but like their gym was out in the natural air. They would wander around. They, they, they even set up an oracle at Delphi where people could go and do dream therapy. You would go and you would take some baskets of grapes or olives or cheese or wine, and you would give it to the priestess. And then you would go sleep in these underground caves. And then you'd get a massage. And then you would like wake up and someone would interpret your dream to you. So the natural world of Greece was a perfect setting for philosophy to be born in. Now, there are also you know, philosophy, there's Eastern philosophies like Taoism and Buddhism and there's other philosophical movements, but I'm just saying in Greece, 
Like right now, let's suppose you had a scary dream that is recurring as kind of like a disturbing nightmare that keeps recurring. You would find a, somebody that does dream analysis. You go and make an appointment and go into a big building and sit and talk for 55 minutes about your dream. But in ancient Greece, the setting was there and they would actually have, um, you know, places where you just go and spend the night in a cave and, you know, sleep there and the priestesses would come out and give you a massage, then you'd, you'd feel better. I'm not making this stuff up. This is real. Well, tell me more. Tell you more. Here's the last paragraph that we're going to read from this little introduction, which is the basic teachings of the great philosophers. So this was actually a book I used for philosophy two. I use a different book for philosophy one, but I, I taught from this book when I taught uh, philosophy at a, at a Catholic high school. This was a very liberal Catholic school, and they, they believed very much in free thinking and learning about all sorts of stuff. Okay, here's the last paragraph. Your philosophy and the philosophy of those whose names appear in books of philosophy differ only in that the latter use more experiences in weaving their patterns. Those patterns which satisfy them are more careful and thorough in fitting their experiences into a pattern. Theirs is a more complete, more inclusive pattern, more logical, more consistent, more accurate. So whether or not we're talking about, you know, uh, Hegel or Nietzsche or Wittgenstein or, you know, uh, the, any philosopher that's a famous philosopher, their philosophy is associated with their name. But this guy says that everybody's, everyone can think and they're putting together their philosophy of life. And uh, anyhow, that's, that's that. That is that. What, what do you mean that's that? What I mean is that is what we have agreed to read this introduction and that some of the philosophers that they discuss are Plato and Kant, Descartes, Spinoza, Comte, Rousseau, Spencer, Berkeley, Dewey, Santana, Hegel, Leibniz, Locke, Aristotle, Bacon, on and on and on and on. But uh, our goal is to live our lives and go into our lucky weekend. So I'm going to take it you're not going to go to the gym today because you pulled your back and you've strained your neck. And what are you going to do about that? Well, I'm going to the gym because that's what men do. Um, and I'm a man. <laughs> okay. What is your philosophy of pain? Your body is giving oh, you, you have to. Like, I, I'm very much uh, like, I very much like stoicism. So you just uh, embrace it and... Uh, Power you know. through it. Yeah. Okay, but your body is giving you a message. Your body is telling yourself, stop it. Stop it with the belt. It was too high, tight. It was too high. I'm going to grab your neck muscles and make you stop. But you're not listening to your body because you're a man. Because my body wants me... I mean, if I do, if I listen to my body, I, um, because I'm worried about my soul. Is it your body you're, you're worried about or is more, you're, you're worried more about your soul? Tell me. Currently, I'm more worried about my body because uh, I have some high blood pressure. I'm tall, so any weight I put on is evenly distributed, so it doesn't look like I've gained weight. So I'm trying not to have salt at home, trying not to have sugar at home, trying not to have alcohol at home, and trying to cut back on coffee. So if I go out, I'll have a drink. If I go for a birthday party, I'll have cake. But I'm trying to work on my body because that's, that's the only one I got. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, also, I'm, I'm also 
not in the state of grace. Grace, either you're in a state of sin or you're in a state of grace. So grace means God's life within us. So basically you're kind a person is either sort of in a state of grace, which means you kind of know you have some sins and you're kind of trying to work on them and you might go talk to somebody about them and you try to cut back on some of your addictions. I would say that that would be generally in the state of grace. If you're in the state of sin, that means you're tied up with your ego and you're doing things that are hurting people. You're hurting yourself and like everything's effed up. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, like I, I have some concerns cause I haven't been to confession and I, ever since father Don left, I've got this obsession with father Don is gone, but you know, I have some, I'm, I'm actually not a very good person. I sometimes flirt with married men. <laughs> I don't take any action on it. Well, I mean, not usually, but, you know, I don't have the intention of stopping. So if I don't have any intention of stopping some of my bad habits, why should I go to confession? Well, that's the point. Uh, I always ask myself, what is better to sin and then to confess or like, quote unquote, not sin and not confess. And I was told by a priest that there is no such thing as not sin because everybody's a sinner. You just maybe you don't know and until you're asked because they have these questions, you know, where you have to answer yes or to each one of them because uh, like it's a win win yeah. situation for, for you and, and, and priest. Yeah. Well, like, you know, for example, I don't know, a month or two ago, we were talking about something and you had gone someplace and there was all this wonderful cake. The cake was so good, but it actually you ate two pieces and it gave you a stomach ache. So, your body was telling you that's that's too many. But like, is that the sin of gluttony? No, you just had too much cake. But for example, let's suppose you're a kleptomaniac and you get a rush out of stealing things. So whether you're stealing comic books or you're stealing watches or whatever you're stealing, there's plenty of people who have money to buy watches or CDs or whatever it is, but they just get a kick out of stealing. So whatever our various addictions are or our various sins, if we're aware of them, that's step one. And then step two is, do we even want to do anything about it? Like, I don't know, like I'm really, 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 really angry at two specific people. But I'm not taking action on it. I'm not going to send off like snarky texts and I'm not going to go, stab their tires and let the air out of their tires. I mean, I would yeah, but, but that. imagine that you were uh, uh, not quite, unquote, I don't want to say God, but uh, like you would be the, the player in um, in the computer game and uh, you do what, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Would you do that to those people? Um. God has knowledge of what we are doing, but he doesn't cause us to do what we do. Yeah, that, that's why I asked you. If, if you knew you could do that to those people, like that they were wrong. They, I don't know, that their behavior was uh, unacceptable. They've done awful things, but uh, you still, you don't walk up to them and say, you're so and so, you... Uh, have that and have so and then put a bullet in their brain. But no, you, you, I no, generalize, saying, you don't do it, but uh, no, what, I would, what I would say, that. I would say that God has given man, human beings, the gift of free will. We can choose to be good or bad. We can choose to help our fellow man. We can choose to be a faithful wife or husband. We can choose to give food, share our food with the poor. We can choose. So we have freedom. We have freedom and that's a beautiful gift, but it's also a, a, a huge burden. You know, it's a huge burden to have to be free. Like it creates a lot of anxiety. It, cre it creates a lot of anxiety to, to be free. I remember Dostoevsky wrote the story, notes from underground, I guess, but uh, he said the free will, I want to smoke, I smoke. I want to kill myself, I kill myself because that is my free will. And you cannot just, uh, 
uh, deprive me of it. But that sounds stupid because if your your free will is not for that, is it? Yes, it is. Your free will is for you to make a conscious choice of how to live. And because we are conscious beings, you know, we don't go to heaven or hell because God lets us. We send ourselves to heaven or hell by, you know, there's all these various stories of people who were converted in their lifetime, either towards good or towards bad. Like we constantly have options and because I see God as a benevolent God who gives us this option, you know. Well, I think that's that's a very nice God. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't always, I don't live a very good life, but I'm saying I have the option to, and I know what I should be doing. And I, I don't know, I mean, they just made this law in Texas. The governor of Texas made a law that, People who work outside, construction workers, landscapers, uh, contractors. There used to be a law after four hours in the sun, you needed a 10 minute break and the boss had to provide water. Just last week, the governor of Texas made the law, no, let them sweat. And that passed through the government, the Texas uh, government. Governor signed the bill. So I just happened to be driving around the other day and I saw all these guys with oh, so, so hot building outside near, near this grocery store where I go. And I thought, I'm going to go inside and I'm going to buy, I don't know, a whole bunch of water and sodas and just drive it to the site and just hand it out there. Or then yesterday I had somehow I had all these popsicles. Like I had all the I had somehow gotten all these popsicles. Like they were not very high quality, but they were like frozen watermelon flavor, frozen lemon flavor, frozen grape. I had about twenty or thirty of them. I just put them in a bag, drove them there, and just I didn't hand it one by one, you know, to each person. I just handed it to some guy. And I just said it's hot. And the guy just about fell over that anybody would would bring anybody a glass of water. You know, it's like, I'm a, but I mean, I can't spend my whole day driving around all of Dallas giving out popsicles. I mean, that's ridiculous. That then I would be crazy, right? Well, because uh, you you're not crazy unless you think you are. Because other people, if you think what other people think of you and if you look crazy to them, that means you're getting angry. Yeah, that's true. So we have the weekend before us. We have Friday night before us. Is Well, I mean, I'm, I'm still... <laughs> You have Friday. Well, I don't know. We have Friday before us. We have Saturday and we have Sunday. Traditionally, Sunday is supposed to be a day of rest. So a lot of businesses used to be closed on Sunday. It used to be in Texas, you couldn't buy liquor on Sunday, but they repealed that and you can buy liquor on Sunday. But I'm saying, you know, we have the weekend ahead of us and um, we're in lucky 7-7. So, you know, we have the opportunity to cash in on our luck or head to the gym and ask somebody at the gym, where do you think this belt should be? Well, do you know where to put the belt so you don't like tear up your back again? Um, mm, say again, because the line kind of like you were breaking up and I didn't. What I'm understand. saying is if you're going to go to the gym, are there helpers? They're called spotters here. They call them spotters. Um, yeah, I love it. I, I love the word spotter. Yeah, like it's I not mean, a couple. Yeah, I mean, uh, is there someone that can show you for your height and weight or whatever where the belt should be? Of course. There are many instructors. But I um, don't want to ask. 
Right. I do my way. Everything you is wrong because as he, as we've just discussed, free will is free will, right? No one can deprive me of it. I want to hurt my back. I do it. I want to smoke. Yeah, I smoke. Exactly. That's how men are. Like you can be on a road trip with a guy. You can be lost. A woman will stop and ask somebody. I'm like when my father was driving, never stop and ask anybody. Just keep going the wrong way. Or like when I was married, um, <laughs> You know, could be going the wrong way. I know we're going the wrong way. I go, why don't we just stop and ask? You know, he looks at me like I've just said something really ridiculous. But I have found that some people like to ask for help and pe some people don't. So fine. Let's just keep going down this wrong road, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just people are different, you know. And and you you seem to be independent and you, you like to do things your way. And that brings you a certain amount of happiness and I'd say, you know, bravo to you. <laughs> you can walk out of the gym with your neck hurting, your back hurting, and say to yourself, good job, I went to the gym. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm, I, I hear you. <laughs> I think me and, and Dostoevsky could have been the soul brothers. Yes, yes. I'm very fond of the Russian writers, and I'm also fond of, of um uh, Many different writers. It's interesting how different people in different parts of the world and different parts of time they kind of relate to to what they're what they say. Yeah, he said, "What if I want to smoke? I'll smoke. If I decide I just want to wear the same old jacket all the time, I want to wear my old jacket." Was that was that the idiot or the what's the one where the guy is wearing the same? Oh, it's the Ward Six. Is that Chekhov? There, he's wearing the same jacket, wandering around looking at people who've gone away. I don't remember. Well, you read that. How story. do you feel? How, do you feel sad or upset? I feel, or? I feel great. I feel amazing. I feel like putting on some music, like dancing in the dark, and uh, you know, doing some lunges or yoga or something. Yeah, I feel pretty good. So, so the therapy session achieved its goal, right? I think so. I think. I think so. I also like to vacuum. I'm a big fond of vacuuming. I love to push the vacuum cleaner around. <laughs> I mean, some people have their favorite chores. I love washing machines to do the wash. I love to wash dishes. I love to vacuum. I like to water my plants. What are some of your favorite chores? Chopping wood. Yeah. And cold water. You know, it's really deep well. I like to drop the bucket to the bottom of it and then take it back full of water. That's a meditation. Uh, uh, like, no, uh, there is nothing com better to to be compared with it. Uh, yeah. I have seen some old wells in um, Greece and also in Turkey. Very old wells that are now, is it deep. You put a, a bucket on a, it's on a string or something. Or yeah, that's what I do on a string, on a rope, actually. But uh, yeah, and uh, that's what I have. That's why I like it, because you drop the bucket, like it, like it goes to the middle of the earth, I don't know, into the core. You don't even see where it yeah. drops, because you just hear the sound. And I think, what if I just fall into that hole, and who's going to help me? And uh, that's it, right? But that makes you like, real anxious, but that's... that's uh, that also gives you pleasure, like knowing yeah. that you're going to find that hole in cold water. And uh, and you say, no, 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 not, not, I didn't really want that. And uh, it's like sadomasochism. What's the word? Sadomasochism? Sadomasochism. Yeah, sadomasochism. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, yeah, death wish stuff, you mean? Yeah, I don't know what this wish is because I, I'm not sure about the subconscious reason for it. But uh, not that I want to die or looking forward to death. But no, uh, I mean just kind of living on the edge. You know, like you know, but I, I don't want to run deep, out. In front of, looking into the deep wall isn't living on the edge. You're standing there thinking about falling in. I do. And you said sometimes okay. before you leave work, you go up to a certain floor and you look out and wonder what it would be like to fall from that edge. And like I- Yeah, but don't you? I mean, we all have this thoughts now and then. Like if you have a gun and you uh, look, you know, it's empty, but still you look into the barrel of it and think what would have happened if you just press the uh, 
trigger and stuff? Didn't you like ever try that? Yeah, I'm not into guns, but like I have this metaphor of running across the road, dodging big trucks. And I've also jumped on a moving freight train and also jumped off of a moving train. Well, what, what, you're like in a Canadian, because uh, what about float your boats, right? Is that how they say? Because I'm, I'm not, ever, I'm in the train and jumping on the trucks. That's not my thing. Like two no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I was, I was in college and uh, a little town named San Marcos, which is near to Austin, there were some trains that went by and we used to, there, there were some rivers you could go swimming in. So some of us would go get our bathing suits and get some food and go like on a picnic and stay out all day. And maybe we had beer. I don't know if we had beer, if we were drinking rum and Coke, who knows what it was, but we would see these trains kind of go by and some of them were really, really slow. And we were talking, you know, when you start drinking, you come up with really dumb ideas. They were, we were thinking, well, we'll wonder what, like there's a song by Arlo Guthrie called the city of new Orleans. It's about riding on a train or like Peter, Paul and Mary have a song 500 miles. Like it's all these train songs. So we were thinking like, well, what if we get on a train and then I was okay about getting on the train, but like, how would we ever get off? And then like, we didn't even know where the train was going. And we were just like college students. But like when you're in college, just the idea of leaving and not coming back was kind of appealing. So I remember we, there was a train that was stopped and we somehow got on it. And then it started going very, very slowly. And then we thought this is like the most stupid idea in the world. And I had like a, like a, like a beach towel or something. And I decided I was going to drop and roll, literally drop and roll. I was going to jump off the train just onto the bushes or the grass or something. So there was about four of us. We just jumped off the train and rolled, rolled off the train into the bushes. And we got, we got cuts all over us. So we were not jumping onto train tracks, but we were jumping off of a slow moving train into, uh, like raspberry bushes or something. Free will, we did this. Yeah, I was in college. That that's what's when I that's when I thought I was really smart. Yeah. <laughs> you must have I done some sad. crazy things, huh? I, I feel sad. <laughs> and I like it. Well, good. Good. <laughs> Do you have your uh, fridge stocked for the weekend? You're going away, uh, refrigerator stocked with your your drinking supplies or what you need? Do you need to go shopping? Well, I don't need cash? anything. I don't need anything. God, God gives me everything I need. Well, very good. Because I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't have anything. God gives me everything I need. So if I want to drink, I just find some water or, or some whiskey or Jack Daniels on the rocks. Uh, and uh, if I don't need it, God just won't let me have it, right? Right, because if, if it's not a man, Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm supposed to be trying this new kind of coffee that's called flat white. And it's supposed to be two shots of espresso, which is too much for me, and then like a micro foam of milk. I don't really want to do that. I really would rather have a cappuccino, but I sort of promised this person I would go try a flat white. Will I or will I not keep my promise to this person? What person? The prom? what? Promise to what person? I promised this person that I would try a flat white. What person? Well, his name is Vlad. His name oh. is Vladimir. And yeah, he, he, doesn't that like, he doesn't like Russians. Okay. <laughs> and, I mean, I can't blame him because uh, he's Vlad, you know. Well, you know, I mean, I guess he had ancestors or something. But anyhow, he went to Turkey to ride these hot air balloons. And he was completely mad. Vlad was mad because he couldn't get flat white coffee. 
I go, that's something they make in Paris or like, you've got to be in a big city. He goes, yeah, they, they serve me this really crappy coffee. I go, and a, what, a Jezbe? He goes, yeah, what was that thing? I said, it's a Jezbe. I go, they don't make flat white in in Cappadocia. So anyhow, well, these, these there's there's like, it's very complicated. <laughs> my, my life is very complicated. But I did promise I would like just try. I saw it at a menu. I saw it at a coffee shop, but I didn't want it. I just wanted a cappuccino because it had like more milk in it. And I, and you know, so anyhow, yeah, I'm not going to try a flat white. I'm just going to watch other people have flat whites. Yeah, I'm not even going to try. Not trying. See how decisive I am? Yeah, no, I... Uh, <laughs> I have to take my pills, I guess. And it's time for my pills. My subscription is over. Well, adios for now, and have a great weekend. Lucky 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah.